fall is among us or will be among us here soon and for us crafters it's time to start thinking about what we're going to decorate and so this next series we're going to be making this mini quilt you can either make it as a table runner like i did here or a wall hanging which you can rotate your blocks and have it hanging like this it's however you want the orientation we use applique we embellish it and we're using a decorative binding stitch so if you want to learn how to make this adorable fall mini quilt then stick around hello and welcome i'm jackie with jackie russell creates where we talk about everything quilting i hope to inspire you to make traditional patchwork quilts or some art quilts whether they're big or they're small so let's get started we're going to start with one block it per video and then we're going to have the assembly in another video and then i will have a full video of the whole process later on so be sure to check out the playlist it'll be linked in the description below and at the end of each video to be able to see each quilt block being made and you can also get the pattern the link is in the description but it will be up on my etsy shop you can get each individual block separate or you can get the whole quilt pattern as one so let's get started so if you like this we are going to assemble and finish our either wall hanging or table runner that we did with our little applique of our sunflower our pumpkin and our acorn so if you're ready to see this project get finished and put together then stick around so what you need to do is decide how you're going to orient your blocks. I'm going to do a table runner, and so I want mine going sideways, like that. If you're doing a wall hanging, you may want them to go up and down like this. So depending on how you're doing it, Depends on how the next step goes, but it's the same concept. So I know I want the sunflower, then the bird and pumpkin, and then the acorn. So now we're going to put sashing around the blocks. So you're going to need four pieces that are one and a half by 12 and a half, and they're going to go along if you're doing the table runner and you have it oriented like mine they're going to go along the side if you're doing a wall hanging and they're going up and down then they're going to need to go at the top and the bottom so that's the only thing that's going to be per se different so i'm going to sew these on using a quarter inch seam and i'm going to pin mine and i'm going to do a the chain Situation where I'm just going to run them all through the machine at one time, or well, right after each other, but without cutting my thread. This last block is going to get two, I'm going to sew them both on, at, and then when I press them open, I'll press toward the sashing area and then sew them all together. I would love to see how you put your pattern together you can join my facebook community if you would like and that just is in the description below but it is also just facebook and it's groups jackie russell creates is my page and then my group is jackie creates community so i would love to have you over there where you can share what you're making and it does not even have to be quilt base if you're a cross stitcher or an embroider crochet you can share any of your projects that you do you can also ask for some input 
advice we all like to share and help each other out. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew these together. So now I'm going to just pin the blocks together and finish adding the sashing. And then I'll go to the iron and iron the seams toward the sashing. Now that it has the sashing through there, we're going to put some sashing on the top and the bottom. Or if you're doing it the other way, it would be down the sides. So the long part, which you'll need to cut a one and a half inch by 40, one and a half by 40 and a half inch long piece to go to the top and the bottom. So what I like to do, I like to start at one end. I'm going to pin this corner and I'm going to pin this corner, making sure that my strip is not twisted. Then I'm going to fold it in half and find the center of both the sashing and the block. And I just put my finger in there kind of like that so I know where it's at. And then I just hold it, open it up, make sure the edges are straight, and put a pin. Then I work my way and filling in between the pins. This just assures that everything is lined up, measured correctly, and fits in there nicely. So we did the first, between the first two pins, now we're going to do the second half at the top and then we're just going to repeat it along the other edge and so that at a quarter inch and then we're going to press it toward the session so I'm gonna finish that up and then we'll be on to the next the next step now that we have our sashing done we need to work on the outer border the outer border is just a checkered board border and what I did is I just took and cut strips of my background fabric which is this tan and then I just took the scraps of the pieces that I used in each block and I cut them at two and a half by two and a half square and then we sewed them together you could also do it in the strips like if you had a longer piece like this green, I had a longer piece, so I just kept it as one strip and then cut them into the blocks and then laid the blocks out. So we're going to finish this one block here. If you're going to do them individually like I did here, you need to press all seams toward the dark fabric, not your background fabric, all toward the dark fabric. That way... When you put them together and you flip them so you can get the checkerboard, the seams are going to nestle up with each other, and then you're able to just stitch straight down that way. And then when you stitch them together, it's going to be every other, they're going every other direction on the back so that it will lay flat and have less bulk when we start to do our quilting. So I'm going to nestle those seams up. Make sure I'm sewing them the right way. Nestling the seams up. You can pin. I just go to the sewing machine and just stitch. And when I did the strips, I just did chain piecing. So I'd put two together, stitch them, two together. But I had them laid out so I knew which was like the next one. So now we're going to add this last piece to this strip, nestling up those center seams. And you're able to fill, fill them. And then make sure your corners match and sew it. If you're doing the exact measurements as the pattern, you're going to need two strips that are gonna go down the short sides, 
which are going to be seven blocks, but it's going to measure at 14 and a half by four and a half. And they're going to go on each side. You can lay them however you want, whatever directions, I think. So this one I am going to pin the same way as I did the sashing. I'm going to go corner to corner. It's a little easier to find the center of the smaller pieces. You know, you really just can give it a little tug and make sure that everything's lined up. I like to pin along the seams and I just put a few pins in to help hold that in place. Do this one the same on this side and this one because I have orange down here I'm putting the orange up at the top. You can lay them out however you would like. You could actually make these a solid border if you want. So how is the weather where everybody's at? We are hot here. We're hitting 100 degrees. And we actually have a heat index, which is very odd for Wyoming. We normally don't have heat index. Very, very hot. No humidity, which we very often, seldom hit 100 degrees anyways, but we've been hitting high hundreds, or not high hundreds, about 104, 107. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch down this border to the main project and then when you iron it you're going to iron it toward the sashing there we have our border on the short sides and now we have to do the border along our long side i wanted to have a corner piece so i cut these at four and a half by four and a half you'll need four of them and then you're going to sew them to each end of the border, which this border measures 40 and a half by four and a half. So then when we attach this, the checkered will line up even with the sashing and then it will just be the corner block with the um, outside border. You can continue this so it's just one continue of the checkered board it's your whatever you prefer so I'm going to attach the corner pieces to the border and then attach it to the main piece you can pin if you'd like I like to at least put one pin when it's a little longer in at the end and because I'm chain piecing I am going to pin the rest of them in both corners and when I iron this I will iron it toward the corner piece so now we're gonna just attach them and because I want to make sure that this lines up they should nestle because we ironed this toward the sashing and this toward the corner block they will nestle right there and I'm going to pin those so I know that that's where it's supposed to be. I'm going to pin the corner. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Making sure that my border don't get twisted. I'm going to nestle these seams. And put a pin in there. And then I'm going to find that center again. By folding it in half. But this time I'm going to kind of line up these seams. Where the border is. Because... We know that that's even. And I'll put my finger in there and line it up. I'm going to open it and then I'm going to pin it. And then I'm going to work my way to the other end or to both ends, making sure it all eases in and the way it's supposed to be. And normally I work from end to end. Like you just saw, I put a pin down this way and then I move to the other to the center. That just kind of helps line everything up in in my opinion that's what's easier for me so i just did it the center i'm going to bring it down this way and line up the edge and put a pin in there i'm going to do the same thing on the other side matching up those seams you'll, you're able to feel once they nestle you'll be able to feel them in there pin the end of the corner making sure not to twist and I'm going to nestle these seams. 
I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to uh, um, hem it or sew it at a quarter inch and then I will press toward the sashing and our top will be done. You can quilt it however you would like to have it quilted. I am going to do quilting in the ditch around the border, down the sashing. Well, I guess it's kind of in the ditch. It's going to be real close to the seam, but it's going to be on that just a little bit out. And then to hold my blocks in place, I'm going to just stitch around the outside of the applique. The pattern will be in the description. It's on my Etsy shop. You will be able to get each individual block as an individual pattern if you don't want the whole set. Or you can get the whole pattern, which is all three blocks and the border. So I'm going to go take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew these and iron and I'll be back in a few. There you have it, the finished top. Now it, you can quilt it however you want. I am going to quilt along this edge of each block. I'm also going to quilt just around the edge, outside edge of the applique. And then in the border I'm going to stitch around each little block. So I'm going to go ahead and go quilt that and then I'll be back to show how I'm going to bind it because I'm going to use a decorative stitch to bind this quilt, mini quilt. So now we're doing the binding and I'm doing it with a decorative stitch. I have it on the leaf that I have on my machine. So I just did a regular binding where I attach it to the front here and then flip it over to the back. And normally you would stitch in the ditch or you would hand stitch it. Well, we're going to do a decorative stitch to attach it down. You prepare your binding just like you normally would. Clamp it or clip it. Set your decorative stitch on how you want and then I'm just taking the center, my binding to the center. So it's attaching on the binding and then part way on the quilt and just letting the machine do its stitch. And I chose to use yellow thread. So it stands out just a little bit, but it's not like in your face bold. So I'm not for sure if you can see as it's coming through the back of the machine. But I will take a close-up of, of it when I'm done. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below what your favorite part was. If you're new here and feel like sticking around, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I upload Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Until then, happy quilting, my friends. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below what you liked about it. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know the next time that I upload. I upload Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Until then, happy quilting, my friends.